It seems we are live. Hello there and welcome to this Composer interview. My name is Elias Lukinen and today we have a special guest here with us. A person that has composed for many different games and is a Finnish composer. Let me introduce you to Mikko Tarmia. How are you doing, Mikko? Hello. I'm fine. And thanks for having me here. A pleasure is, interview. pleasure is all on our side. How is your summer been going? It's pretty hot. It's about maybe 30 degrees here and <laughs> I have two fans blowing <laughs> in max speed here. That's what we need. That's so. the spirit. And uh, yeah, and we have already Pearson saying here, Jelly Duck, hey there, glad you're back. Indeed, great to have uh, Mikko Tarmia here and uh, to hear his backstory. So basically, this composer interview, we're going to be going into Mikko Tarmia's, you know, his experience with composing, what he's doing right now and what he's going to do in future. So peep, uh, Mikko, can you introduce yourself to people that do not know you? Yeah, I'm Mikko Tarmia. A Finnish composer living here in Mikkeli in Eastern Finland. And uh, I've, done, I've done music for uh, 20 or so games. And uh, people might know me from scores for frictional games. Games. And maybe some others, but. Uh, uh, in your uh, in your Wikipedia, it says you have made for Soma, Overgrowth, Amnesia, Penumbra uh, games and others as well. So, you know, if, if I personally look at here, many kind of uh, this sort of horror ambient sort of feel of games. Ye yeah, that's what I do and uh, mostly. How did you... Uh, so how did you uh, found yourself in this sort of area of uh, making music? What is your music? What, what 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 led to that? Uh, that's kind of funny thing. Um, before uh, you, you make me my background, I, I started composing music in the beginning of nineties, and uh, my buddies were doing music with the Pro Tracker and Amiga, and uh, I copied the program and uh, tried to do a few, few tunes by myself and um, we we did a lot of techno music back then and uh, later on I transferred my style into more classical music and thought because I have a gaming background I played computer games all my life what sort of games uh, all kinds of games in the 90s they were What's a uh, RTG games like a uh, rhythm strategy, like a StarCraft and uh, Dune and Comrade ah, Conqueror. Ah, real-time strategy games. How, yeah. Were you very good in them? I was quite good. Not in the competition kind of way, but... Uh, so so that led you to become uh, kind of interested about making music, is that correct? Yeah, I didn't do too well with the techno music. I tried to make record deals, but no, no one was interested back then. Maybe the the stuff I, I was doing was wasn't that good. Uh, what year was that? Uh, it, May I ask? Uh, like uh, 96, 97. All right. And uh, then I figured out maybe I could do music for computer games, and um, I was still working. I was still doing music with Amiga and was watching that scene. Amiga was going dead quite soon at that point, but there was still some games coming out and I contacted some developer who was doing real-time strategic game for Amiga. And but, what, the, uh, what was that called? I don't remember, but I didn't get the job, but uh, I studied orchestral music some more and uh, in 2001, I had my first project, which was Codebender Software's Deep Trouble. 
Indeed. So, you know, can you uh, tell something about that here? But uh, before we go that, yes, uh, see people in the comments say we have some buffering. Unfortunately, yes, that's uh, well, my fault, not anyone else's here. My, I live in this sort of uh, middle of nowhere with no connection towers and this sort of stuff. So, yes, unfortunately, that is the case. However, I, I, we are currently recording this interview as well. So afterwards, we're going to be having it, you know, fully functional and ready to go. But yes, can you tell something about that game? Yeah, the Deep Trouble pro pro was my first game project, and uh, at that time I was studying classical music, instrumentation and orchestration. Like, uh, I was in Music Institute, and uh, I really tried to develop my skills with orchestral music. And uh, Codebender Software is a Mac developer. If you, you are in, not a Mac guy, was not a Mac guy at that point, you probably have never heard of these games. I actually tried but, to uh, search something about this Deep Trouble, so what kind of game is it? Uh, I have no clue. It's a adventurous submarine game, where you are a little submarine and uh, shooting enemies in the bottom of the sea. Ah. And uh, if you can find my score for the game, it's quite uh, amusing maybe. <laughs> like. Uh, it's like um, orchestral score with uh, very much action, like uh, in a funny way. <laughs> so that was uh, what was the year for that? It was two thousand two. It was released, and um, I did few other projects with the uh, Code Blender software. One was a rally game, and um, then was the Deep Trouble two. But at this point. I had no idea I was becoming a horror composer and um, the the way I got these projects from Codeblender there was this idea of games forum for Mac developers and I left my post in the forum that uh, I could do some music for your game so please contact me and I got contacted by this guy really? from Codeblender yeah so you went it, to at, to forums and then you posted there and some people contacted you. Yeah, but uh, back then there wasn't so much competition around. I was like uh, one of the few people at the moment, composers writing in that forum. And uh, well, I got lucky, I guess. But, very uh, nice. Nowadays uh, the forums later, are very uh, crowded. Yeah, yeah, it became crowded. Few, years after then but uh, i was lucky and uh, i did few projects with code blender and at the same time i met jens nielsen from frictional games or oh, the frictional game didn't exist back then but i was doing work with him and he was an audio designer for these projects and uh, and then 2006 jens asked me if i could do some music for penumbra tech demo the first one before oh. the actual official penumbras. It was just a small demo, but uh, it got very good feedback, and uh, they then decided to make penumbra a commercial game. So you and met some my, people. How, so you met very important kind of connection, and then you started uh, collaborating with him much more in your early times. Yeah, Jens was uh, another founder of Frictional Games, so he had. <laughs> very much power in that so company. fictional uh, frictional games uh, for people that don't know it's a game development studio and what sort of games they are focusing on doing Mikko? um horror games uh, they have done few games the penumbra trilogy uh, back in 2007 and 2008 then amnesia the dark descent 2010 or 11 and then soma 2015 and now the upcoming Amnesia Rebirth. All right. So you have been which very should much... come out with... Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I was just, yeah, I was the Amnesia to... Rebirth, which, which should come out later this year. I don't know the day yet, but... Uh, nice. So you're actively working it's, on it's stuff. It's been announced. Time. All right. All right. Oh, we got some early speak, uh, early, early peak of, you know, 
uh, of the information that's coming to come out. Very nice. I tell you, one of the things uh, I want to ask you is that, you know, you start said, you know, how did you start making music? You went to this forum, you met these people. But the big question is, you know, you said you became this sort of horror composer. So what is your musical style, if you would describe it yourself? Like, what sort of music you are known for? Yeah, no. <laughs> well, it must be the horror stuff, horror ambient and the horror thing. And uh, that's also kind of problematic because I'm now profiled as a horror composer. Every time somebody asks me to join their project, it's a horror project. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a <laughs> quite so, interesting. So, so you say that, uh, you know, you might want to perhaps do something else, I suppose? Yeah, once in a while, yeah. But I'm happy with them. Of course, how of things course. are. <laughs> so, so, so is it is it the same thing that uh, when you do the, you know horror music, what sort of other musical styles you're interested in? Um, I think ambient music and electronic music in general. All right. But uh, I'm not. I don't want to limit myself with any style. I like to. I like classical music as well, orchestral music, and. Um, do something with it. I see, I see. Is it that, uh, where, uh, where did your musical composing career began? You you mentioned that, you know, with the forums and such, but like, what, was it the, the beginning or has there been something before that or after that? Uh, not really. I don't know if my buddies wouldn't have copied me Pro Tracker for Amiga. I don't know where I could have been now. But, really? Uh, so that, that was, was my very youth. major thing? Yeah. Yeah, that was my youth, and uh, I listened to music, and uh, and I did and kind of composed music, if you can say that music, what I was doing back then. But uh, <laughs> so, what kind of tools did you use for to make this music? Yeah, I started with the Pro Tracker Amiga, then I moved to Octamed, which uh, Pro Tracker was a four-channel uh, tracker for Amiga. You know, Amiga had only four tracks basically two left and two right oh man so a bit <laughs> and, uh, limited but you worked with it yeah and but octamed had eight because if you had to like uh, something like amiga 2 uh, 1200 it could handle the eight tracks with high quality so i moved to moved to octamed all right all right so that's sort but, of well, yeah yeah but, yeah but back then uh, uh, I, I of course wanted to have some outside gear like a s real synthesizers and stuff so I started buying 10 at the time but uh, one problem was that uh, we didn't know much about them there wasn't wasn't internet around so which well, uh, again well, like for people that they know where this is going uh, with what year was this uh, I bought my first synthesizer 94 and it was Roland D550 the famous one <laughs> from the 80s <laughs> but uh, i was more lucky than my friends who just bought something by the ad and uh, it said synthesizer and that when they bought it it was actually a real shit like oh. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the, so much info back then yeah everything was must be a gamble nowadays you can have so much info in internet land that's the thing yeah but back then i had no, no really skills in audio technology what would you need for mixing? So I was just, I had a mixer and just combined the tracks together and that was it basically. <laughs> so that doesn't, didn't sound that good. Ah, okay, but, but uh, what was the, like you, you started developing with the mixing later on? Yeah, uh, when I moved to Mac, Mac computers in early 2000, then I bought a Logic which I have been using since then for 20 years now. And uh, it had, of course, it had all kind of plugins, which I had to learn. So you're more of a Mac guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm mainly Mac guy, oh. but I, I'm using basic right now. This is one and this one is basic. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What kind of early inspirations you had with your career, you know, songs, composers who contributed to your current style you have? Uh, sorry? Oh, uh, yes. Do you have any kind of people that uh, inspired you in the beginning? Oh, some, yeah. Some composers? Oh, yeah. Uh, I was listening much of techno music back in the 90s.
but uh, my big, biggest influence at the time was Apex Twin. And uh, I was kind of following what he was doing. Who is that composer? Like uh, Apex, Apex Twin. Apex Twin. Richard James. Apex Twin. Apex Twin. Ah, yeah. all right. <laughs> I just said it right. Yeah. But uh, he was doing like a really strange electronic music back then. And but uh, when he started using orchestral components in his music, that was uh, like a biggest changing point in for my music as well. It's kind of and like I a mind inter- blow situation, like whoa, all of these. Yeah, and uh, I really wanted to learn playing instruments as well. I took piano lessons, I took woodwind lessons, uh, and uh, really started to develop my skills, otherwise than in composing. I see. So, like, what kind of, do you now play regularly these instruments yourself? Yeah, in, at 2000, and w- I went to music institute, and uh, I was interested in playing oboe, but they didn't oh. have any room for oboe, so they handed me out a bassoon. <laughs> bassoon, All right. Yeah, bassoon, and uh, you know, bassoon is uh, the lowest register playing instrument in woodwind. Yeah, very rough uh, one. And uh, but I I haven't regretted it because in like I studied it for over five years and uh, became became quite good at it and uh, I played in orchestra projects and uh, very nice and many gigs gigs or any kind of gig maybe at a <laughs> so you have like a, you have been ba- ba- that yeah bas- a bassoon was it yes I, yeah bassoon very very lovely sound there is you know you own bassoon you play it regularly I suppose yeah yeah I still try to keep my skills up very good, very but not, good. But not, not, not quite so often than I used to when I was studying it. Like, uh, not every day. <laughs> so you mentioned about orchestra that, you know, it interested you and kind of opened your, uh, like, uh, your works in that. How has it uh, reflected your, let's say, music for this game project that you are doing, this sort of, this orchestral side? Yeah, like I said, uh, I was changing my style to more orchestral stuff in late 90s. I, I bought uh, Roland's orchestra mod- module and uh, really started practicing the orchestra composing by myself. I didn't have any nobody to help me with that, but uh, oh. it was more like uh, experiencing it by yourself, listening to wh- how other composed music and uh, try to find your own way. Was that easy? To do the but, same. But was that easy to do? You know, self-learning and doing that sort of work. No, not really, but it became with the time. Yeah, like uh, if uh, I studied it for like uh, seven years to compose orchestra way. Of course, I had some skills in <laughs> when I in, when later I developed myself. Uh, may I ask, what is your like first musical breakthrough uh, in, in your career? What could it be? Uh, it was must be the amnesia, the dark descent, because um, the Penumbra trilogy developed by Frictional Games as well before Amnesia. Uh, it was more like a cult classic. It wasn't that known around. So at this point, I was still looking for projects, like um, asking for developers if I if they could have have me something. But uh, after Amnesia, I there wasn't no need to hunt projects anymore because then it turned vice versa and uh, I was asked if I could do projects. Very nice, very nice. So the so amnesia was really a breakthrough in that sense. Yeah. How how was it uh, like? How did it, how how was the change? Like you know, you started working for amnesia. You made the soundtrack like, uh, and uh, currently afterwards, like uh, what was the effect afterwards? What was the effect? I, I mean, like uh, you made the compositions there, and uh, you know, start, you started then. Uh, like, did you before that do regularly game music uh, for projects, or uh, did you only start after that? You know, do more. Yeah, I did the code blender stuff and a few minor projects before that, but uh, this really changed everything. Like um, before Penumbra. I didn't know anything about making horror music, so that's something I had to experience myself as well. But um, for 
amnesia or penumbra the it it, it was more like a it, it had more tra- tra- traditional elements than amnesia because um, uh, amnesia was more about uh, creating weird sounds and uh, penumbra was more like a, made with real instruments but in amnesia i really started uh, experiencing with the uh, sound design in a way uh, see how how so uh, because i did i had a need to make a really weird stuff like a, a scary stuff so it's not that easy to make with the traditional instruments or it became a, like a how they did in the 70s or 80s it's a more like a cliche style of stuff uh-huh. and, and it, it didn't work in the game i see i see so it was a bit different on that point uh low so many people know you for amnesia dark descent that you mentioned can you tell about making music for that particular project yeah so after penumbra uh, frictional games didn't yet have much budget for amnesia so I wasn't. We were working with the limited budget, and uh, because I was paid by a minute, I did the music for it. We had to use like a short loops, <laughs> shorter loops. So the loops aren't that long in that game. Mm. So but, you know, when when you made it, so like, uh, was it that difficult to do, you know work with that time, or did did uh, we uh, did that give you some kind of a different edge on the music i think it gave a different edge because um i uh, was was also limited by the fact i couldn't use or didn't want to use any instruments that didn't exist before the game's story is based on so my source material was really real instruments samples of course mostly but the the way I did the music for Am- Amnesia uh, was uh, I was manipulating the sounds to sound like uh, like a, something different than they were. How so? Yeah, to make make it sound weird and uh, strange and scary. <laughs> of course, to create the atmosphere. So, like uh, when you made the music for the Amnesia Dark Descent, uh, like. Uh, uh, what, so, so you know, was that the moment you, that you mentioned? You know, you were solidified to be this sort of horror composer. Was it before that? Uh, I think it was after Amnesia, because that—that's what I was. Uh, it gave me my name as an as a composer. People started to know something about me. People got interested in me. I see, I see. Uh, so now, do you work on uh, full-time making music? No, I do, don't. I, I've never done that. Uh, if you watch my, look my credit list, list, it isn't that long. If I have worked for 20 years now, almost, uh, if I have worked full-time, it would be like a Much three, times, yeah. three, three times longer or so. So how so? Like, uh, uh, is it that uh, you know the projects, or is it that you know you have something else on the other side? Yeah, I'm I'm working as a me- me- media producer in the, this company called Otavia. I produce media for web courses, which you can study. And uh, this composing thing has been like a side job, which I do in my spare time. But uh, it's okay to me if you look at the development time of games, the big projects I've been doing for fictional games. The Somatic, Soma took like uh, five years to compose, and uh, so so Amnesia Rebirth will do that as well. So they are long-term projects. Five, yeah, they're five years, and uh, they don't need co- composing uh, all the time. So that's why. Uh, you rarely see a developer like that uh, hiring uh, in-house composers. I see, I see. So, you know, then uh, there's big gaps in between and then you work on other stuff in that time, sort of fashion. Yeah, it's more, more seasonal, like uh, like now in summer, I mean, 
I have a summer vacation from my day daytime job, and now it's my time to work on, on game music. Then and uh, right. uh, look from the look look from the window when the sun is shining. And, uh, <laughs> Is it, uh, is it, oh, that's is, okay. Is it, is it that sort of like a thing that, you know, um, you know, if, if you would have this sort of like people say, hey, I have a full-time composing thing, uh, well, do you like more the fact that you, it's kind of seasonal? You know, what is the thing you prefer on the making music side? Uh, I've, I've been used to this because um, the entrepreneur side of the music business, it isn't that secure and... Uh, like for paying the more mortgage of your house, uh, you need to have a constant, like a, flow. Um, constant, constant income, and uh, game music really isn't that. It's insecure. Ah, uh, it's, it's the insecure part because of the you know the uh, as you mentioned, some projects might you know have big gaps with without no mu- work on the thing because you know you of course do the music side of things or like what what could that be? Yeah, maybe it would be like a, I would have been take, taking a risk from trying to get into full-time position as a composer because um, first of all, by like I have a daytime job and uh, I could couldn't go just to try to catch a few big projects because then I would have been in trouble <laughs> and. Uh, it wouldn't have worked but I see, that I way. See. Of course, of course. It, you know, it depends. You know, and I, as you say, it's very volatile. Uh, making music in, you know, for many people, you know, people have uh, went to my channel and asked me sometimes, you know, how to start doing this. And it's you. You would say that possibly that it's not not that secure all the time. You know, making music yeah. as your main career. And and then there's a, this thing like a, in game projects. You're you have deadlines and you are, are responsible for your work. If you don't get the deadline, then you're in trouble. And uh, so uh, less project for me and uh, less trouble, I guess. <laughs> so I don't wouldn't have that much pressure in my job. I see. Well, you know, that's a very good thing. You know, uh, you can work on it in, in a good ways to make the thing you want to do. Uh, my question is now that uh, you have made this sort of dark ambient style music like, you know, for Soma and others. What is the greatest challenge of making music for these sort of dark uh, game environments? Yeah, like uh, like I told, uh, the horror thing for for me was new when I started working on Penumbra. And for Amnesia, it was more about manipulating sound. And uh, for Soma, like when I jumped Soma. to the synthetic sound almost entirely, 80% of the job was probably creating those sounds, and 20% was composing. Oh, so, really? Yeah. I, I was doing creating instruments all the time, and uh, that's because the most minute uh most of the soundtrack is, is like a scary ambient so i had to like uh, create sc- soundscapes and they require crafting instruments i call my technique composing technique for this painting with sounds uh, oh, because i i I, I, ba- I basically create sounds and uh, insert them to a timeline how do <laughs> you, know, you create could- these sounds with synthesizers, <laughs> many of them, or by manipulating them, uh, but it's, al- it's always sort of... a, it's it's always a challenge. So you know, let's say an example, just to get the kind of picture for people, like how you do it. Or let's say you have to create this sort of like uh, uh, music for this sort of dark room or something. Uh, what? How do you approach it? Uh, by the atmosphere, it uh, it gives me like a artistic style colors I see because I'm quite visual person when it comes to influences and uh, I always must think of something visual when I compose and uh, if I see a room I started thinking about uh, different sounding layers like uh, in high frequency or low frequency and uh, if I can uh, I can hear the other stuff going on like if there's sound effects and such used in the room so i must m- must make room for those 
always thinking I must mix my music like uh, to fit in. So you mentioned like, like 80% of your creation is sound and then the later the composition part. Uh, is the sound creation, like how do you approach it? Like you, you mentioned the synthesizers, do you like uh, mix and, you know, you use your programs and, and this sort of uh, skill you have in audio, you know, design and this sort of thing. How, how does it, how do you approach it? Yeah, I started thinking like uh, some kind of sound. I don't probably need to do it from scratch, but uh, I rarely use any preset sounds from anything. Like uh, I might uh, browse for uh, presets from some synthesizer plugin and uh, think uh, like uh, this has some good element going on somewhere in it, and uh, I must tweak that. So- I might tweak that sound to something else, but keep that something element I got interested in, and uh, that way I create a new sound. Uh, just a curious curiosity, like you mentioned that you use Mac. What sort of main composing uh, virtual, uh, like I mean, like a digital digital audio workstation you use? Can I ask? Uh, I have few Macs, and uh, I've been using like Logic for twenty years now. And um, Logic, nice. Uh, yeah, that's why I use Mac Macs because it, it isn't available for PC anymore, and um, I don't want to change my program of course when you find good one you're going to stick with it that's how it works yeah yeah i tried cubase but uh, it wasn't my thing yeah well, jimmy howtoyarvi here who i asked actually you know he was very interested about this interview he asked uh, i'm impressed uh, i'm impressed how dynamic mikko can write for projects the stressful moments but also calm ones as well as colorful colorful harmonies and melodic writing acoustic instruments versus electronic instruments question mark Yeah, hello, Jimmy, and uh, thanks for asking. And uh, I use them both. Like uh, I have a uh, loads of instruments in, in my room. Like uh, some instruments which I c- can't even play, but I I'm using them from for for making sound effects. And uh, many acoustic instruments can do very interesting sound effects if you don't play it like it is supposed to. How so? Can you give an, as an example? Yeah, like a woodwind instruments. If you play it like uh, with wrong, you you don't play it right with the fingering. You, otherwise, you get a clean sound or something. But if you try to find bad sounds for from it, them, them you might uh, find something interesting. Like uh, I don't know if you uh, know the <coughs> bassoon sound I made from Amnesia like for the water chase element. Uh, that's one sound I made that way. Like uh, it's a bassoon played in wrong <laughs> way to make those uh, horrible sounds. <laughs> that is very nice. And that, you know, that makes the atmosphere in there. So what level was that? Uh, it was before the back hall, the first place where you can relax. There's this water monster running after you nice so that's bassoon in there oh very nice very nice so like uh, you you mentioned on this process land so do you mix uh, usually like if you prefer like yes uh, jimmy how we ask acoustic versus electronic instruments like uh, uh, do you always include both of them in your works or do you like sometimes use one or the other uh, no like i said uh, for amnesia we wanted to use acoustic instruments as a source even if they are samples most so of them how, but, uh, how, uh, so was it like you know just kind of this sort of coher- cohesion in the soundtrack or what sort of what yeah, sort of idea want, they had yeah we wanted to hear like uh, it was uh, from that time the game story was based on so i couldn't have used any synthesizers like uh, for that <laughs> I see, I see. So, you know, to fit the game. My actually question is that when you work on projects, how you do you like, uh, how does the music pro- uh, work is kind of like, you know, they ask you a question or two like, hey, can you do this sort of music? And then you start working on it. How does the collaboration between the developer himself and you go? Uh, from fictional games time or, or in general? 
Uh, just uh, in general, I suppose, you know, uh, of course, different companies work different ways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Frictional Games has uh, always an uh, audio lead uh, who asks m- music from me. He, he makes the uh, music documentation, like uh, with the descriptions, how each event should sound like and uh, what's the purpose of the event. And, um, and then I simply make... Th- music for each event and uh, get feedback and uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't so uh, then i make a new one but uh, the audio designers really know wh- what they want like uh, they have a good sense for it but uh, is the collaboration some- sometimes hard you know you yeah, so- sometimes when i i'm connected with a, a, a with a developer who doesn't simply know what he or she does want so we had to fi- find like a t- they they can't give you such such amount of feedback like the audio designers could so it's a it's partly guessing if we are doing the things right and uh, some sometimes developer can't explain what what he or she wants. So they, they so so it's kind of this sort of trying to search the kind of the thing they want at the same time as they do not uh, directly know what they want. Sort of. Yeah, uh, they might give me some references like from soundtracks from other games or new movies, but uh, I see that as a guide. I I don't really want to copy that style directly. Like uh, like uh, I think Soma. Uh, we had some references from Blade Runner, and uh, I don't nice. think if you can hear anything like sounding like Blade Runner in that pro- project. But uh, <laughs> well, that was something you know they were perhaps looking for. I see, I see. My uh, the thing is that you know when you work with these people, is it that uh, like uh, how long the process usually takes? You sitting down and discussing the music, and then it becoming a full composition. Yeah, it's a great with frictional games because I can step in with very early states of development and see wh- wh- where it's going to. Like, a, but it has some downfalls as well because how so? For like a Soma, they were first doing a game with less horror and more adventure, but uh, when the development went on, they decided to change with uh, more horror and less adventure so part of the music i already did for the soma was then rejected because it, it wouldn't fit in anymore so you had to work a lot of new musics there yeah like uh, um, almost everything from that is point it, is it <laughs> is it all you know does that sort of thing happen often that you know they change plans and then you have to like uh, rework stuff or how how uh, how long do you like let's say you make a song uh do you have to some uh is it like a rare that you have to rework it some point so is it often uh, uh it depends like um, from fictional games it happens because they are like they're not satisfied with the game some part of the game they want to change it that then i must change the music too but that's no problem uh, because um, the music has to be able to function in that game and uh, of course i have to change it then but uh, i think it's uh, like uh, pre- because i i'm working for fictional games from the very early point of the development uh, that these things happens but uh, usually when some other developers ask me for their project the projects are usually uh, almost finished like uh, like uh, th- then so I, you are very later uh, on brought in yeah usually in smaller pro- projects then. is it good thing you know uh, to be early in or like uh, which is the better one uh, it depends like uh, like i said uh, there are some downfalls when you are with the project in from early stage, but uh, I don't have that much ta- time pressure on my hands because the, if I can do the music for five years, then I have plenty of time to do that. 
so it's not not a problem. Well, that's very nice. That's very nice. Uh, PBSA asked in the question section. Well, I have a question for Mikko Tarmia. What was the hardest instrument that you learned or tried to play? Hello, PBSA, and uh, thanks for asking that. Uh, I don't really know because I'm quite good at one instrument with with, with this bassoon and uh, I am maybe a decent player for a few instruments like a classical guitar but uh, and a uh, few others but uh, I don't really know because if I'm not good at instrument like uh, I've been trying to learn cello playing cello but uh, I'm not good at it and uh, it's very <laughs> it feels like a very hard uh, so because we, I have mm, yes. like a, because I have a woodwind background I have played very woodwind instruments like a flute and clarinet and oboe and bassoon uh, it was quite easy to let's say jumping from a bassoon to oboe because they have like a really similar sound making style the reed was quite similar and uh, oboe has also the fingering system is very close to clarinet and flute in a way so so they it's uh, that, so, so they are very similar each other but then you know cello is a quite a different thing. yeah that's a different thing and uh, <laughs> it's quite difficult but uh, somebody might say that bassoon is very hard instrument that it, it is but uh, it doesn't feel that to me anymore so like uh, you mentioned something like uh uh, you mentioned a piano, flute, and a guitar, and cello, and these sort of things. That you know, are these the instruments that you have uh, played with? Yeah, not in a very like uh, I have played clarinet in an orchestra and uh, bassoon in orchestra, but uh, I'm uh, in a certain way. Uh, it's for me. It's enough if I can play some tunes. If I can utilize these instruments for my projects. That's I don't I'm I'm not planning to become a, a concert concert player or like anything. But uh, the but thing you can is use the sound. Yeah, the thing is to learn the basics, and then you can utilize them for your projects. Well, that's very good. You know, you know, some composers they know every instrument, but you know, it's it's uh, as you said, it's the, the having the kind of the basics even in like can be a huge advantage. Could you say, let's say, are you going to use the cello sound at some point, perhaps? Yeah, I have used. I used uh, like a. Uh, if you want listen to carefully, there's a end credits track in Soma where I play cello. I didn't play it very well, but uh, I, I had the possibility to fix it. But uh, I have, and uh, a cello is a good good instrument for sound effects, like uh, really scary layers for some ambience, you know, like. You can get quite different kinds of sounds out from it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Jimmy Hautajärvi asks in Amnesia the sound fi, uh, sound effects Tapio Liukkonen did communicated with when uh, with him uh, when composing. Uh, not much because I was more like uh, working with Jens Nilsson, who was the audio designer, and uh, he probably was doing together with Tapio because they were both working uh, with sound effects but uh, I was doing the music and uh, I only communicated with Jens I might have few words with Tap have few words with Tapio but uh, not not much Right. Uh, uh, Crystal Clear says hello, and yes, indeed, we are currently interviewing uh, Mikko Tarmia, and we have learned his background, his working process, which is very interesting. This stuff, you know, he has acoustics and then synthesizers here at work. Uh, we're going to be now qu asking the question of uh, could you tell us about your most uh, notable recent project? You mentioned that you have a, now uh, a, a, in summertime more time. Uh, what kind of project are you going to be working on possibly next? Uh I'm currently finishing my work with the uh, Amnesia Rebirth, which is the official Frictional Games Amnesia project. Like, um, and uh, it will be out at some point in autumn. I don't know when, but that's what I've been doing last five years. So it's a long-term project. Yeah, like Soma, it took five years as well. 
Alright, so soon, in, in autumn time, we're gonna be seeing some new works from Mikko. Uh, Crystal Clear asked a question, Where, uh, when did you become a composer? When I, I guess, <laughs> when I made my first tune in the, in the beginning of the 90s, but uh, when I first got paid for something that I do, was my first uh, game project, Deep Trouble in 2002. Deep Trouble 2002, the submarine game. Yeah. Are you still working with those people, you know, that you worked back in the day? Uh, no. Not really. Is it like, you know, but, when, um, when you have these collaborators, you know, some people I've, I've interviewed, they say that they have these one people if, and they sometimes work with them long times. Have you, do you have these sort of, you know, oftentimes collaborators? Uh... Not many, like uh, I've been working for fictional games like uh, for 14 years now. Ooh, nice. Like uh, I don't soundtracks for their every developed games. Uh, besides the Amnesia Machine for Peaks, which was developed by a different developer, the Chinese room, and they had their own composer for that. Um, I don't know after this project, but uh, let's hope I'm with the new personal games project as well but uh, then i am i've been working for uh, some smaller projects uh, everything is actually horror <laughs> horror games <laughs> uh, there's this uh, game called cold side which is a ukrainian developer adro games uh, can it be found in internet somehow somewhere yeah if you find like a Try to find the cold side horror game, and you find find their Steam base. Right, and then there's uh, I did some couple of tracks for Captured, which is a horror game by Sir Bedlam Productions, which have some interesting horror games. A uh, cult said says that you know they are going to be releasing in 2020. So you know you're going to be having uh, many projects released in 2020, possibly. Yeah, probably, and maybe really? this captured as well. Uh, and then, and then there's a uh, this. Uh, I did a, last year. I did a, this small game called Dishonored Curse, which is developed by Christian Blantford, which is a young, sixteen years old boy, which I call a Wonder Boy because um, for sixteen years of age he has developed many games. He's an awesome skills with the piano oh, can you, can you and, say he what his name again? and he uh, this one it was a designer's curse and uh, can you repeat the name i didn't hear so are, what, what's the name of this wonder uh, 16 year old uh, person uh, christian blantford christian blantford how you, did you meet if you, try, if you try to find designer's curse horror game you will probably find the steam page as well all right all right yeah, so how, so you met met him in this sort of course. Uh, he he found me. He asked me for the, his project and uh, oh. as well as these other other projects as, as well. They they asked me. <laughs> very nice, very nice. So like, uh, uh, so you are very open minded if people ask you for projects overall. Yeah, yeah, not. I I won't accept every project, but uh, if there's some potential potential. In the project, and uh, if, if, if it's interesting, I might join in. I see. I see. Even if, even if even if it's a small project, because they're fun to do. So you do you like? So do you often like doing smaller projects? Even. Yeah, because it doesn't take that much time to do them, and uh, it can be fun. Yes, indeed. Uh, the thing is now that we have a uh, we have this sort of channel that we have people over here. We had uh, Crystal Clear who unfortunately said you know he has to go because internet going down. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm, I'm, my my question from people I suppose is that uh, what is your tip for modern day, day composers that want to you know perhaps do similar that something that you do you know music for games perhaps side job or full time if they can do it. What is your main tip for that? Uh, I really have. I actually have many tips. Uh, get connected, because that's the way you are getting your 
jobs. Like uh, it doesn't. If you are connected with other composers, that's probably not uh, that good thing for, <laughs> because because you might be uh, competition competing with uh, for with the same other. projects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, if you can get connected with audio designers or developers by themselves, then you have a better shot to get projects. How did yourself uh, did you get connected to people? Uh, uh, like I told, I when I was working for Code Blender software, I was working with Jens Nielsen, the co-founder of the Frictional game, so that was a big help for me. And uh, so, like, uh, uh, you met these people, you started working with them, and you would say that, you know, for more um, people that, you know, try to find the new projects, you know, themselves, uh, you know, this composer that might have not been in projects before, so they should uh, probably... Um, I, I suppose, you know, get connected, you know, what could you suggest? Go to events, uh, contact people? Yeah, yeah, yeah there are like uh, events. They do have these events, like uh, there are a bunch of uh, guys from gaming industry gets together and uh, have fun. I think they have uh, like uh, in Finland, they have some in Helsinki. And uh, I've never been there, but uh, that's one way to do it, and uh, one way is to like a uh, connect, like a uh, direct directly by sending mail or s something. And uh, and you uh, mentioned at the didn't... beginning that you had uh, kind of like you mentioned at least before the amnesia dark descent that it was uh, uh, at least if I remember right you mentioned that it was uh, uh, like you contacted a lot of people. But once it once you succeeded with that, people started contacting you. Is that right? Yeah, before. Before frictional games, uh, I was hunting for projects, and uh, I tried to email every uh, like a, a bunch of development com companies and uh, try to ask for a job. But uh, they, I think, they already all had their own composers, like, uh, and uh, didn't get any. But uh, then after amnesia, it, the things turned vice versa, and uh, I got emails. And people wanted to hire me for their projects, so it really gives benefits to have something, a project in your portfolio, like uh, like Amnesia, like some one big project. It does help a lot, and uh, you mentioned at the same time that you know when you started working with people, uh, you know you can just like you get connected with people more, more, more. And uh, I, I suppose in the beginning it's the hardest for many people to you know before they. Yeah, it is. Mm. I I got lucky, I think. Of course, you have you know you know how to make some music, and of course you were not just hired because of you know uh, random chance. You are very uh, at, at least what I've heard your pieces they are very nice, neat, uh, dark sounding songs, especially in those games. Uh, we have a question from Jimmy Hautajärvi here, which is uh, he asks, how is the Finnish composer scene? Does Mikko find it any uh, it it a great thing living in Finland as a composer? Uh, Finnish composer scene for games, uh, there are like uh, five or six bigger composers who does most of the big projects in Finland. But uh, I'm not working in Finnish projects, so I don't know that well uh, because my main clients are abroad. Oh, and I've uh, only done one, one one project for a Finnish company. The frictional games, like uh, from which country that is? Uh, that's Sweden. Swedish, I see, I see. Well, well, could you say that in other countries, aside from Finland, there's a lot of uh, composing things happening, or like, uh, is it uh, is it is, is Finland very active in you know games and composition composing things? At least what I've I've, I've seen, I've tried to discover things. Sweden, there's an active game development scene, very active, a lot of uh, studios. What are your, th your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it, the markets are getting bigger and uh, they, of course, if they have more developers developing more games, they need composers. And uh, you have just f find your way to get, get, get these projects. <laughs> 
Indeed, uh, like do, when you had your, you know, contacted people, did you put your music to places like YouTube and SoundCloud for people to listen to those and that sort of stuff? Yeah, I have SoundCloud page, but I don't think many of many people listen to my music from from there because I have then my most of my music for games are available in Spotify and. Uh, places like that so it's much easier to find it there you mentioned you know you're making music for games and such uh, are you going to be working on any other projects you know i mean like your personal projects perhaps doing an album or this sort of stuff yeah that's a long-term project because i don't have really that much time to do anything else than working with these projects but uh, when i have some time i have i've been working on some ambient music not not that scary type of ambient, but uh, maybe I will uh, release an album sometime. Maybe who knows? So yeah, some projects are in works, and you know perhaps we this uh, autumn we're going to be seeing some Mikko Tarmia's future projects. Mikko Tarmia, I thank you very much for this interview. It was a pleasure. Thank you, thank you very much. Atta. If you have any further questions, let me know. Yeah, if people have any questions, I tell you, uh, it's it's. I I have to tell you, your story is interesting. How you started with, you know, was it Amiga or what was the gaming console in the earlier times? You yeah, I started with uh, Amiga. Amiga, and then you you know climb forward and climb forward, and now uh, you were making uh, music for games. You know, uh, you know, doing this horror style and such. Uh, my my personal question is that like, do you do actively? Also, like other music styles, like let's say, very much uh, not just uh, ambient, but something else as well. Do you do you have time for that? Uh, I have like a not really not nothing that I maybe not going to release, but uh, sometimes I write acoustic music and uh, sometimes I like try electronic music and uh, if I. Maybe sometimes if I'm satisfied enough with that uh, to get album full of material, I might release that. But that's nothing, not not the plan. Yeah, that's the main focus. I see. Uh, so we had this was this interview was suggested by Jimmy Houtiarvi. I have to thank him for him because he suggested me to contact this uh, uh, Mikko Tarmia person. You know, it's a very interesting story he has and. I very much am going to be interested to see where his story continues. Where what can we find your stuff more at? Uh, if you want to follow me, I have a Twitter page and uh, I have my website at mikko.tarmia.com. Uh, Mikko.tarmia.com, yeah. indeed. Yeah, but there's not much info, but... Uh, I try to be more active in Twitter, and uh, you can also contact me by t with Twitter or email if you want to. Indeed, so like, uh, uh, you, if if I can still ask one question, like you, uh, do you use uh, if uh, a lot of your time, let's say, putting your stuff to this? Uh, like, I've I've looked at the, there are some of these composer communities that use a lot of time in these Twitters and uh, YouTubes and these sort of places. Uh, do you more more work on the music, or do you? Uh, like how much you do this sort of like uh, uh, social media stuff, I suppose. I'm not doing social media. Like I had a Facebook, but I I quit it using it because uh, it was uh, embarrassing to if I, I visited visited Facebook like uh, once a year and there was like 20 questions waiting for to get answered, and then it was embarrassing to try to even answer to them. So I decided not to use Facebook Facebook anymore, but uh, I try to be more active with Twitter. I haven't been really, but uh, that's like a news channel for me. Yeah, indeed. There's a, uh, you know, of course, your studios, they have their places. I saw that you shared one trailer from fictional, fictional games. I'm very much interested to see where this thing continues, and I recommend to follow Mikko Tarmia. His Twitter, his Twitter is Mikko Tar, uh, at Mikko Tarmia. And hey, Mikko, I very much appreciate for the interview and looking forward to see where your projects continue in the future times. Thank you. Thank you much.
Thank indeed, you very much. indeed. It's a pleasure to have Mikko Tarmia here. And of course, Elukel is going to be continuing with the composer interviews. And yes, sorry about the connection thing. Unfortunately, that is on my side. But I tell you, I'm going to be uploading this very much afterwards to the land of internet. And you're going to be all seeing Mikko Tarmia's all thoughts and that without buffering and all that. Elukel is going to continue the works and we see you in the future. I appreciate it. I wish all you good day. Bye.